man and beast mingle playfully, content in their companionship. Extraordinary, isn't it? This could be a zoo in India. Or even a sanctuary. No, it is none of those. Not a game park. Not domesticated surroundings. Yet a very special relationship between man and beast. What is it that gives these animals of the wild the confidence to frolic with human beings? It is because of people like this young man who have nurtured this relationship and been willing to sacrifice their lives to protect animals. My son, Nihalchand, while protecting a deer, was killed by poachers. It was a fateful Thursday, the 3rd of October, 1996, at Savansar village in Churu district of the state of Rajasthan. On the outskirts of the village, a small herd of deer grazed peacefully. Not for long, though. A party of poachers arrived. A shot rang out and a deer fell to the ground. Aroused and angry, a group of villagers rushed to the spot. Protector faced poacher. Another shot rang out and this time Nihalchand fell to the ground. Hours later, the villagers gathered to mourn the dead and to resolve that the young man's sacrifice would not be in vain. Innumerable sacrifices have left a trail of grieving widows and families. Sampati Devi, widow of Nihaljan Vishnoi, is one of them. Hanuman Singh, the father of Nihalchan, speaks his mind and says, I grieve for him, but I'm happy that he became a martyr while protecting our Bishnoi faith. So, what is this faith? And who are the Bishnois? Sant Jambeshwar, the founder of the Bishnoi faith, was born in 1451 in this village, in Nagore district of Rajasthan. Pipasar is proud of its most famous son, and the site of the house where he was born is now marked by a temple. From his early years, it was clear that Jambhoji, as he was then known, was exceptional. Every child in the village tended cattle and goats. So did the young Jambhoji. But his spiritual inclinations were soon evident. The desert is a land where man and nature meet in communion. It was upon one of these sand dunes that the young Jambhoji sat and pondered and began to elaborate his beliefs. The long years of meditation led to enlightenment and the dawn of a new religious sect. And so, a new faith was born. Jambeshwar's teachings were uncomplicated and easily understood by the people of the desert. 
29 tenets detail the Bishnoi faith, a way of life and a set of rules and attitudes towards the environment, health and hygiene, morality and a very special consideration for women. The believers, those wishing to enter the faith, became a part of the Bishnoi family in a simple ceremony of accepting water, the most precious commodity in the parched desert. Sant Jambeshwar commanded his followers to be compassionate towards all living beings, not to cut green trees and not to kill animals. For 500 years and more, the Bishnois have protected their faith, their surroundings, and the flora and fauna of this region. All that is green is life, and therefore sacred. Bishnoi women do not hack green branches, but search for dead wood to meet their fuel needs. It is not easy. Home and hearth cannot be sustained on dead wood alone. The women spend hours every day, much more so than any other rural community, scooping up, preparing and using cow dung cakes for fuel. Even in death, the Bishnois are ardent conservationists. Despite their strong Hindu traditions, they do not cremate, but bury their dead. Perhaps a wood-saving device, sanctified by the founder of their faith. To the Bishnois, all trees are sacred, but there is a very special place for the Kejerli tree. It does all of what most trees do, act as windbreaker and provide shade to man and beast. Its roots go vertically deep down. The foliage allows light to go through, allowing crops to thrive beneath it. Its leaves provide fodder for camel and cattle and the fruit makes a nutritious dish. Prized for its many qualities, the tree has long been coveted. In 1730, when Jodhpur fort was being strengthened by Maharaja Abhay Singh, there was a great need for timber. A large contingent of soldiers descended on Kejerli village, 20 kilometers from Jodhpur, intent on hacking the carefully nurtured Kejerli trees. In defense of their trees, the Bishnois demonstrated the power of their faith and a startling display of courage and conviction. One by one, Bishnoi women, led by Amrita Devi, stepped forward to embrace the trees to their bosoms just as the Chipko movement was to do hundreds of years later. This was an act that was to cost them their lives, their heads hacked by the axes of the soldiers. As the news spread, Bishnois from 84 villages, men and women, old and young, headed for Kejerli with one thought. They would die, but not let the trees be cut. At the end of this bloody episode, 363 Bishnoi bodies lay on the ground. These martyrs are remembered in stone and in the hearts and minds of the people. Enshrined in popular memory are these images of a heartless ruler and a tenacious people. 
Hundreds of years later, the actual sequence of events is somewhat hazy. What is undisputed, though, is the spirit of the people to sacrifice. In the magnificent environs of his palace, Gaj Singh of Jodhpur, the descendant of Maharaja Abhay Singh, elaborates on the happening. In Maharaja Ajit Singh's time, he had ordered some works to be carried out in the fort, and some wood was required. And I believe the officials were then told to collect wood. And apparently some incident did take place, which we have heard from childhood, and it is there in the oral tradition of the bards at Khejali. In historic records, it is hard to pinpoint. But uh, I believe that something must have happened. Because one fact is there, is that the response of the Maharaja is reported that he immediately rushed to the spot and uh, stopped everything. And uh, the people were reprimanded who did it. And he exempted all Vishnui villages, which were on the revenue records, from any kind of tree felling in there areas, as also the, any kind of killing or slaughtering of wild animals or hunting in those areas, which remained right through the times to the, when the states were merged. Um, and um, it is still respected. And Vishnois have been great champions because of that, of preserving their environment, the desert environment. The royal decree that was issued in the wake of the Kejirli incident was remarkably stern and made easier the self-ordained duty of the Bishnois of protecting animals. A typical Bishnoi village has always been a scene of harmony between man and nature, full of animals and birds. But the political and social environment is far more complex today, and the task of the Bishnois is increasingly difficult. Ram Singh, the General Secretary of the All India Bishnoi Association, says, "Now, when you are talking to me, that the 26th February 1998, so this is telling you." Even as we speak today, on 26 February 1998, in Bikaner district, 3,000 Bishnois have surrounded the police station at Baju, demonstrating against the lack of action. There have been almost 25 incidents of animals being killed by poachers. The protest began three days ago. Despite the cold, the Bishnois are very determined, but the authorities are not cooperating. Despite such disappointments, the Bishnois continue their traditions. Fervent in their beliefs, they congregate on several occasions during the year to take stock, or simply to reaffirm their faith. One such congregation takes place at the annual fair at Mukam, in the shadow of the impressive monument built over the shrine of Saint Jambeshwar. Through the day, the Bishnois stream in, the men in Spartan white, the women in resplendent colors, in a collective display of the togetherness of the community. As the Bishnoi people pour in, each household brings in a voluntary donation of grain. Willing hands sift the grain and store it in underground granaries till they begin to overflow.
peoples of different religions in India have traditionally expressed their faith by donating in kind. But for the Bishnois, this grain is not for the upkeep of stone or mortals. It is for the flocks of birds that the temple attracts. At every Bishnoi pilgrim center, sand dunes are lovingly created by the faithful, carefully molded. A fistful of sand, more than a token of belief. Jambhuji knew that the dunes are at the heart of the desert's ecosystem, barriers against raging winds, protectors against erosion, and recreators of fertility. At some, like in Samrathal, where the sage attained enlightenment, Vishnuis trudge up the slopes of a man-made dune to deposit yet more sand. For such an environmentally conscious people, it is odd that many of them carry sand up in plastic bags, which are then left to litter the slopes. Jambhuji, if he were alive today, would surely have objected. The community needs to be aware that these plastic bags can destroy the fragile desert environment. Perhaps the Bishnoi community will respond to this and to other modern day threats to the environment. As a community, they certainly have the strength to do so. Their strength lies in their community structures, which provide platforms for debate and discussion. On the leadership lies a heavy responsibility to make the community aware of current threats and formulate their own responses. Behind the leaders stands the community and their beliefs, not just the men, but the women too. Rameshwari Devi is one of them. In February 1998, she took on a gang of five armed poachers. Although they did manage to bring down a deer, Rameshwari Devi would not let them take away the carcass. Foiled and deprived, the poachers ran away. Later, she handed over the deer to the police. Rameshwari Devi's story is but one of many steeped into the folklore of the Bishnoi community. Santosh Kumar, the younger brother of Nihal Chand, says, There have been many martyrs amongst us, like my brother Nihal Chand, and this is the reason that the Bishnois have been able to protect over 500 years animals and the environment around us. One such martyr is Birbal, killed by poachers in 1977 while trying to protect a gazelle. Decades later, his memory is still alive. A statue erected by the villagers commemorates his heroism. Almost in the shadow of the statue of Birbal is the Satri of Lohavat. Here, birds and animals are cared for and fed, an age-old tradition of protection and compassion. Over the centuries, mutual trust has developed to the point where animals and man fear no one and trust all, even the occasional strangers who come into the village, as did the crew of this film. Neither the vehicles nor the intruders could disturb the harmony between man and beast. This unique relationship owes much not only to Jambhuji, but to the followers of the faith and, in particular, to men and women like Birbal, Amrita Devi and Nihal Chand, who have been prepared to lay down their lives for their convictions. Nihal Chand lives on too, buried in the center of his own village, where there will soon be a statue. 
he remains in the minds and hearts of his kinsmen, who have gathered in a prayer meeting in his memory. Rajinder, now almost a teenager, is proud of his father Nihal Chand and of the posthumous awards that recognize his bravery. This one was conferred by the government of Rajasthan. There are others, like this one, from a voluntary organization engaged in conservation. Nihal Chand's wife is no less proud, but apprehensive of the future. The travails of bringing up a family are beginning to tell on her slender shoulders. Nihalchan's father's spirit is unbroken and his faith undiminished. As he leads Vijender, his younger grandson, by the hand, he knows that there will be many, many more like Nihalchand to carry on the faith. Uh. 